Well, it's been a massive week for Harness Racing Victoria, announcing their three-year strategic plan. Trots 24, it's entitled, and it really does uh, set the foundations for growth and excitement in Harness Racing in Victoria for the next three years. Joining us is the CEO, Dale Brown. Um, Dale, welcome and thanks for your time. Yeah, good morning, Adam. It's great to be with you and uh, what a wonderful launch of Trots 24 it was yesterday. But great coverage and uh, a lot of exciting things to look forward to for harness racing, not only in Victoria, but uh, nationally as well. Whenever we talk about harness racing in Victoria, and you know it, probably everywhere you go, people say, what's going on? Are we any chance of getting back to the showgrounds? Um, there's all this mystique and history around it. What is the state of play? Mm -hmm. So we've had a, a number of ongoing discussions with the Royal Agricultural Society and their executive team led by Brad Jenkins. And those discussions uh, led to us looking at the current footprint of the showgrounds. And as you probably will remember, Harness Racing Victoria back in the early 2000s, prior to moving to Melton, looked at the possibility of a relocation to the showground. So we got out a lot of the old specs and spoke to their executive team. There was a lot of fruitful discussions through that period. And the, the issue and the stumbling block at the moment is that a 740-metre track is the only size track that can fit into the current layout and footprint because of the heritage buildings that are existing on site. You'd probably, for an industry to be comfortable with a move to the showgrounds, you probably need a 900-metre track. So at the moment, there's some of the issues which uh, uh, are probably a stumbling block for us to 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 think about taking that project any further. But if there's any solutions that come up in the future that can alleviate that issue, we'll certainly keep that dialogue going with the Royal, Royal Agricultural Society. Well, thanks very much for that update. Uh, now into some of the key ingredients of TROTS24, this three-year strategic plan. And the foundation of it is that you've actually come off a really, really strong 12 to 18 months of, of wagering growth on Victorian Harness. Yeah, we have, Adam, that's right. And uh, it's been a great period for Harness Racing. And I, I think I recounted yesterday when I first started back in the end of 2019 and then the, the tour of early 2020 to the clubs, you know, Harness Racing was in a dire financial position. Uh, the punter had walked away from the corporate bookmaker, the high volume, low margin punter, the joint venture was in decline. So harness racing was shrinking and had a relevance issue. So we set about with about 11 sort of platforms on the tour and then COVID hit in March of 2020. And it gave us the opportunity to reset the clock and crystallise those initiatives that we, we walked out across the, the clubs throughout Victoria. And a lot of those initiatives around reimagining the calendar, looking at international, looking at the way we, we race the time of the year, looking at the types of races, when and where. Um, New Year's Eve, for instance, we changed with the Vic Bread Super Series final. And then we also looked at uh, other ways to be able to get interest in the sport through extending our media arrangements, through, through radio and also Trots Vision. We'll talk about that a bit later. But what that gave us the opportunity to, to do was to build a new audience. And that audience has seen an uptick in wagering, as you alluded to. And at the end of the financial year, just gone 21, we've seen a turnover increase of 22 0.8%, which is terrific for harness racing. And that number looks like continuing now into this financial year. Yeah, well, that's that's absolutely tremendous. I mean, um, I, I think it'd be fair to say it's almost beyond your wildest dreams, but COVID, for all of the many challenges, and we know how many people have really suffered on all levels through COVID, it's actually been a positive for harness racing. Yeah, and, and racing in general, because we were the only show on in town for some periods of the 2020 year, and people were sitting at home, people, especially in Victoria, in lockdown, and I think a lot of people re-engaged with racing again, three engaged with watching it, re-engaged with having a flutter, and I think Harness has been um, has benefited from that, no doubt at all. All right, so I want to pick apart a few of the things you mentioned uh, in that update. Now, stake money, um, you are able to boost stake money in the the 12 months just gone, if you'd like, uh, by around about 1.7 million. Um, I understand that the plans are not to give me a figure right now, but mm -hmm. instead to look at it almost in three monthly blocks. Would that be right? Yeah, it'll be a rolling review of our wagering income 
from turnover to revenue. So what we saw in that sort of from 20, from the financial year end of 20, we paid in stake money about 41.5 million, which is all stake money bonuses, et cetera. And then at the end of 21, we paid 46.5. But that's made up of a couple of things, an extra $7,000 races. So we ran actually through that period 37% less four and a half, more $7,000 races, more Metro front races on the Metro nights. And what they did, that uplifted our, our, our stake money by about $1.7 million. We paid extra in Vic Bread bonuses of about $1 million, which enabled those $7,000 races for people to get their first full Vic Bread win bonus, which was terrific for people from an ownership point of view and training and driving point of view. And also we put on 209 more races during that that 21 end of year, which gave us another $1 million in stake money. So and the APG series of about 1.5. So the actual real increase was about 1.7, which was the sort of the, the decrease in the four and a half, more sevens and more metro front. So going into this financial year, the board have underwritten that 1.7 again. So we're going to keep that that status going. They've, they've applied another $300,000 to that to that 1.7. And then rolling as we go through and as we watch our turnover and revenue rates as we go through this year, where we see the upside continue and it's sustainable, we'll make further announcements and adjustments to to stake money. Yeah, I think I get what you're saying here. You just, you need more of a chunk of time to understand the stickiness of the new punters that you've picked up. You can't can't spend on today's budget because you need to be confident in six to 12 months you're still playing with the same increase. That's right. We need to be sure that we've kept this audience, this new punter, we need to be sure that they are going to stay with us. And then once you know they're going to stay with you, then the sustainability of a further increase can be replicated year on year. And that's your growth, that's your growth factor of this of this strategic plan. Someone said the other day, what's TROTS 24 mean? I said it means two things. It's growth, collaboration with the industry to achieve a vision of excellence and outstanding racing here in Victoria. So it's it's got a, it's got two things that are really the two main limbs, but it means so much as you go through and realise those factors. Tying directly in with this, you've got a new audience watching the sport. Your turnover says that the eyeballs on the sport are up and new and open to being educated, or at least you need to educate them to keep them. Trot's vision is a key strategic uh, part of that. It is, Adam. You need to control your own media space. We need to be able to control the the actual content that's going out, need to understand our audience, what our our audience wants. We know that Trot's vision is exponentially growing. We know that we've got a growing audience. We know that we want to achieve an always-on channel. We want to be like racing.com. When we get to our media rights negotiations in 2024, we've got such a valuable asset that's part of that media rights discussion and further agreements. And it's so critical when we develop the content that we bring in people expert analysis. We bring in people that have been at the coalface to explain the sport to a new demographic because you don't realise, as we've all gone on, this new demographic of young people coming through look like they're wagering on the greyhounds and then they're wagering on us. But they probably don't understand our sport. They don't understand the gear, why the racing style, the way it is. So we're going to invest in our industry people to be part of Trot's vision, to explain tactics, to explain why we race that way, the gear, what it means. So it's really an educational process as well. Yeah, I see that. Um, I like that announcement this week that's come out about whenever you can, using some of your uh, better presenting uh, horse people, if you like, to be part of the coverage. I think that's a wonderful uh, enhancement to Trots Vision's coverage. Um, international, ever since you stepped into the chair, you realised that this needed to be, well, this, not a golden ticket, but an avenue that has huge potential to increase your income. Yeah. When I first got in here, I looked at this ecosystem and it's got to have more strands in it that provide revenue and return to the industry. International's one. What I identified early talking to my contacts in North America and the US was that they were in some turbulence around their sport. They were off. The NBA was off. The football was off. They were very disjointed in the way their calendars were running, especially racing as well. And I saw an opportunity as we had a great product to inject that into North America, to get them familiar with our our people, to get them familiar with our product, 
try and Americanise it a little bit so they understand it and they'll wager on it. And also for our trotting gate back into Europe, let's get that contact and connectivity back to the PMU in France, the OTG through the Scandinavian countries. Let's start building and showing the great product we've got. And Trots Vision will play a part of that because you've got to have something sitting beside the actual race product to talk about the people, getting people familiarised with the, the, the personalities, the trainers, the drivers. So it's really, really important that that international play then comes back from a from a perspective of connectivity. It brings back that extra income back into into Australia and Victoria. I mean, it's important, what well, I talked about nationally before, it's important that all states look at this opportunity because I think there is fertile ground in the US now with the wagering market changing. We're going to fixed odds. They're, they're going away from their previous you know, structure and framework of their wagering market. So there's no better time now for us to have an insurgence into that market. Oh, very true. I mean, the Americans have never been more aware of the greatness of, of Aussie horses and, and horsemen with... Um, you know, Australasia, if you count Dexter Dunn, but Todd McCarthy and Andy McCarthy, um, American dealer and Amazing Dream, the stars of Albion Park last Saturday night are both now owned in North America and will probably end there uh, in the next 12 to 18 months for their racing careers. So the synergies are there for sure. Um, Dale, just in closing, with the increased eyeballs on the sport comes a greater scrutiny and a greater responsibility for integrity and we know the work that you've done on that front, but rehoming of horses and animal welfare, that's such a key part as you get greater interest and scrutiny on the sport as well. And you've really thrown more resources and, uh, and, and development, if you like, behind the HERO program. Going through a restructure of the HERO program, Adam, and I've, I've been very fortunate, as you know, my background. I, I, I chaired the Equine Welfare Committee at Racing Victoria when we had the Off the Track program. And Terry Bailey and I watched the growth of that with retraining from about half a dozen retrainers through to 50 plus to get more people looking at the thoroughbred, retraining that for, you know, venting purposes and other purposes for, um, for that thoroughbred. But the same applies to the standard bread. And, uh, the standard bread's got a bit of misnomer about it. That people think that it can't be retrained to event, it can't be retrained to, to canter and, and, and do things that a, a pacer does as, as, through its racing life. But the actual the opposite's true. These are a great breed for rehoming. They're a great breed for young kids to as a ride horse. They've got a more docile nature. It's all about selling and breaking down those walls about what the standard bread can do. And the Hero Program's the first real foray. Tanya McDermott done a wonderful job as, as it, when that was in its inauguration and she managed it for a number of years and has just now stepped down from that role. But now's the time for Hero to go to its next stage. We need more retrainers, people rehoming horses. We need more events around that, more awareness. And I, I think you'll find now that Brent Fisher heading up Integrity is managing that program. You'll see a lot more awareness and activity in that space. We look forward to it growing. Wonderful. Um, Dale, there's so much more we could talk about, but I think there's some of the key elements to to flesh out a little bit more in a, in a nice, easily digestible way about what the focus is of Trots24 over the next three years. Uh, exciting. Thanks for the time to take us through them all and uh, the opportunities always here to, uh, to catch up when you've got more news in Victorian Harness. We look forward to that. Thanks, Adam. Great to be with you.